Today, I am thrilled and excited to have Inky Johnson here with me today. He's an entrepreneur, he's an author, he is an athlete, but he's also an incredible, powerful, motivational speaker. He has a corporate client list that goes on and on. Chick-fil-A, Aflac, Coca-Cola, on and on. Universities like University of Alabama to UCLA, and then numerous teams like Orlando Magic, Knicks, the Patriots, Buccaneers. I, it goes on and on and on. If we talked about all your clients, we'd be here all day talking about <laughs> your clients. Inky earned his master's degree in sports psychology from the University of Tennessee, three-year letterman, two-year captain of the football team. But his entire planned career changed on September 9th, 2006, when he had a life-threatening injury, and it paralyzed his uh, right arm and hand. But that moment didn't stop him. In fact, uh, in many ways, it seemed to propel him to use his unique gifts to inspire the world, and he really does inspire the world. So welcome. We're so glad to have you. No, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Well, for those of you who don't know your, your life story, I'd love to just delve into it a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, a little, long before college football. Absolutely. Like how, how you grew up, mm -hmm. what, what it was like. And Absolutely. so you were born into wealth and privilege and <laughs> aristocracy, right? I mean, I you're used to having staff, and, right? Was that the way it was? I wish. I wish. It was total opposite. But I always tell people it was still rich, right? It was rich in spirit. It was rich in love, right? It was rich in peace uh, because of the people that I got to share the moment with. Um, I grew up in two-bedroom home, 14 people. I was born to a mother at 16 years old. I uh, grew up in one of the areas in Atlanta. You know, we had drugs, crime, violence, even had it in my own household. And I always tell people I feel extremely fortunate because I got to see both sides of the fence, you know, from watching my mother and my grandmother uh, who believed a certain way, who did things a certain way, and even people that came into my life, you know, that helped me from coaches to teachers. At a very young age, a lot of people helped me. And so even that's affected the way I live my life until this day. But also when I would walk out of my door, I would see things in my environment and I would see the consequences of some of those actions as well, right? Whether it be drugs, gangs, violence. And so I felt extremely fortunate that at a young age, I got to see both sides of the fence and I got to understand decisions and choices and how they affected and impacted one's life. But I feel, I feel extremely grateful, man. I grew up with some adversity and opposition, but I feel like it's shaped and molded who I am today as a man. Not many people would think of the words grateful mm -hmm. and adversity in the same <laughs> right, sense. Right, absolutely. So I think that's unique. <laughs> absolutely. So um, it, it, do you think that people who, who are more privileged, who have more, uh, that it's harder for them to kind of recognize that, that gratitude and gratefulness, um, or, or, or is it just dependent on the person? Like, where do you yeah. think that comes from? I think it depends on the person because I've seen, you know, people that have done well, who parents have done well, and the kids are great. They work hard. They show up. They bust their butt, like, and they're awesome people. And I always say, like, even some kids that grow up in poverty and they go out and their attitude is not the best, the way they treat people, they feel entitled. They feel as if people owe them something. And so you kind of see it on both ends of the spectrum. And so... For me, I think it depends on how one is raised, right, and the people that they're around and what they give to them. I remember telling my cousin uh, when we got to a certain age, because it would be certain tactics used with us doing sports when we were young. Um, and I remember telling him one day, like, man, some of the things we were told were wrong. Like, and what I mean by that is I remember we would play on certain teams when we were in our teenage years, and we would go to play a school. Let's say if we were going to play a private school or something. And we're coming up in a certain environment. And we may have a single parent maybe coming up a certain way. And a coach might say, you know, they got both parents in the household. You being raised by your mother. Like, what's up? Who's going to do this? And who's going to do that? And use it as a tactic of fuel. But I got to a certain point to where I started to realize, like, no. Like, you wish, like you want to grow up in a household to where you got both parents and you got that level of stability to where you can go and talk to a mother and a father and have a balanced perspective. Like you want your parents to do well and put you in position so you can do better and instill the right things in you. And so I've seen it both ways. I've seen people that grew up, did extremely well, 
and their parents, and they raise them extremely well, and they go out and they bust their butt and work hard. And I've seen kids that grew up in poverty the same way, worked hard, and I've seen an entitled spirit on both ends. And so I think it depends on the environment that they're raised in. Really powerful. And if you think about the environment you were raised in and cultivating that gratitude, and then your life kind of changes. You end up with a scholarship. Absolutely. So talk about that. Yeah, How did man. you get the scholarship? Oh. Did you expect it? No, it was a big deal. I was working for it, and I wanted it, but I didn't know necessarily if it was going to happen. I believed that it would, and uh, because my environment was so opposite of what I wanted my whole life, I was always going against the grain. You know, first one in my family to go to college, and so when I would say it in my younger years, people would be like, oh, that's cool, but you know, everybody around here, they don't really go to college. So that's cool. That's cute. You could play a little ball, but the chances of it happening, slim to none. And I was determined, man, because I felt like people around me that helped me, they deserved it. They re they deserved the return on their investment. But also I wanted to change the lineage in my family. Like I felt strongly about that. And so when I got that college, college scholarship to the University of Tennessee, that was a big moment for me. That's still one of the most pivotal moments in my life like I'll never forget kids at our school coming into the library right because that's where we would meet and sign our scholarships if we went to college but most years nobody would be in the library right, right? it would just be an announcement and so I'll never forget people coming in there and my pastor was there my mother my father and as I'm waiting and the coach sends the paperwork over I'll never forget just this rush of people from the school coming in like freshmen, seniors, sophomores, juniors, just wanting to see it. Like it was like they had to see like, oh, man, it's real, like it's possible. And we're sitting there in the library at Alonzo A. Krim High School, and it's just a crowd of people like, oh, man, like it can be done, right? That was one of the most pivotal and powerful moments in my life when I signed that scholarship because I felt like it impacted so many more people that was able to see that moment and see that it was real. Well, it changed people's perspective. I mean, it, it was slim to none. Absolutely. And you took that slim to none for others and widened that view, I think. Absolutely. It made I it a little that. less slim. Yeah, right? I love that. I love because that. Because you, you changed perspective. And I think having just heard you speak and having watched you speak many times, you are a perspective changer. Mm -hmm. And and you bring to people um, a lens that they probably wouldn't, have you know mm. they would they're thinking this way Absolutely. and they walk away thinking that way and they don't always know why yes, sir. They, what story it is that 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 expanded their thinking but I do see that um, happen a lot so you get your scholarship yes, you go to college and you're at University of Tennessee and you're you're equally determined and I guess it was a little different right the the college football experience probably a little different than the two bedroom home in Atlanta <laughs> absolutely was Absolutely. not quite the same, although maybe <laughs> as many people packed into a little room, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not necessarily <laughs> for that long, right? Absolutely. And, and and you continued to bring your work ethic. So what was it like playing football at Tennessee? It was amazing, right, to play football at the University of Tennessee because, one, the resources and the access that it gave me, it just opened me up to a totally new world uh, that I didn't know. Like I always say, exposure leads to expansion in terms of mentality, perspective, thought process. I've always believed this. Even as a kid, I remember the first time I went to the opposite side of town and I saw different homes and I saw different neighborhoods, right? I didn't know people lived like that because where we were coming up, everybody lived kind of like we lived. And so you just, your perspective went as far as your block. And my coach did a thing for me to where he exposed me to certain things. And he was like, no, ain't just people that live different. It expanded my thought process. When I got to Tennessee and started playing football, they started introducing us to different things, right? Whether it's when you go to a restaurant, right? Like, like all this different stuff. But on a ball level, the guys I was able to meet, the resources, the exposure, the level of coaching that I got, I loved it because I didn't come from that. At my high school, we didn't have a real weight room. We didn't have all of this stuff. And so when I got there, I felt as if, oh man, like the playing field has finally been leveled. Like I felt like I had been fighting all this time and I wasn't fighting on a level playing field. I didn't have the weight room. I didn't have the resources. A lot of guys came from those type of environments. And so when I got there, I was like, oh man, it's on. Like I got everything I needed. And then I feel as if education is the great equalizer in life. 
And so now I'm on a level to where my education, you know, it can help me in terms of being an equalizer for my life and the things I'm able to learn and the people I'm able to meet. So it was amazing, man. Even when you talk about it, no matter what, what, whether it's your childhood or even that, your spirit of gratitude is just so obvious as Thanks. you talk about it. I, I, I think that it kind of just you emote gratitude. So um, obviously 2006 was a, mm-hmm. was a pivotal, pivotal year. Absolutely. You had your eyes at that point at a different perspective. You were eyeing the NFL, I Absolutely. think, right? So there was talk of you're in the very top echelon of, of players. They're pretty excited. I imagine you're pretty excited. Absolutely. I'm sure you've, you've had this dream for a long time. And then a certain game kind of changed all that in 2006. You've Absolutely. talked a lot about that. Um, when you were first injured, I don't think you knew at all the gravity mm-hmm. of that injury, right? Absolutely. Um, what Absolutely. was what was it like and how was that, uh, without telling your whole story, because mm-hmm. I want people to see it and see you tell it, but Absolutely. but but what was that experience like that day? And how, how did you maintain that attitude after that? Yeah, that day, you know, people often ask me, they say, you know, the day that your life changed, the day that you got injured, Did you think? Did you see? Did you do anything different? Because oftentimes people may have thought, oh, man, did he wear any different pads, right? And I'm like, no, man, I showed up the same time. My routine on the field, the exact same. I joke with people all the time. I say, man, I even listen to the same pregame music. Phil Collins, I can feel it. I always joke with him. Like everything was the same except the outcome, right? When I went to make that tackle September 9th, uh, 2006, and I found myself in the emergency room fighting for my life, and it ended up ultimately paralyzing my right arm and hand and ending my career. But everything was the exact same except the outcome. And so it's almost like I always tell people, man, you tell people often, like, don't take what you do for granted. Because we do so many things throughout life to where you just get accustomed to doing things a certain way. And you don't think that the one day that you come in and you do something – it can just change. I never imagined, even though we heard it, like guys' careers in life change. You hear it, but you never think that it's going to happen to you. And I was in a position to where I was a projected draft pick at that point. And so I'm thinking, I'm just going to play ball this season, man. Then it's on. I get to reap the rewards of what I've been working for my whole life. And the second game against the Air Force, I went to make a tackle, and my life took a turn. And the thing that kept me grounded and rooted was the people that had been with me my whole life. You know, they helped me see the bigger picture because it got tough because I didn't believe it. It was just hard for me to come to grips with. I could no longer do the thing that I did my whole life and I had gotten so close to it. I just couldn't come to grips that it could end in a moment. And um, I wanted, I'm a loyal person. And so I always felt like, man, when I make it, I'll be able to take care of some of the people that helped me get to this point. And I remember crying, and I was like, man, I'm sorry. And they were like, what are you sorry for, Inc.? I was like, man, I can't pay you guys back for what you did for me. And they was like, you think we did what we did for you so you can make it to an NFL? And I was like, yeah, man, I thought that was part of it. It was like, man, bump that. It was like, we don't care about the NFL. So we did what we did so you could become a decent human being. He said, the only thing we want from you, man, it's for you to use what we instill within you and carry it forth and go and impact the world. So you don't owe us a thing. Just finish the things that you started. You set out to graduate. Graduate, man. Show the kids where you come from. It could be done in spite of opposition and adversity. And so that kept my, my gratitude kind of rooted. But it was a process that I had to go back and do some reconstruction. And I had to capture it because it got disturbed a little bit. Well, you captured it, and now you yes, share sir. it with the world <laughs> Absolutely. in a great way. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Inky, speak to the person who, you know, you, you have that where it changes everything. I mean, it changes your you physically. Absolutely. It, it, you have mentally have to, to readjust. You have to figure out, what am I going to do? Uh, what would you say to the person who who's listening who says, I'm in deep depression. I have had these horrible things happen. How do I, how do I get through this and see ahead if I feel so stuck? Um, you know, I'm just, it's just, it feels miserable right now. Is it going to stay like this forever? And what do I do? How do I cultivate that inky mm. 
thing. That, Absolutely. What is that? Can we bottle that and sell it? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Man, I, I, um, I often say to people, when we go through things, we often feel like, like, why me? Like, why am I going through this? Why did this have to happen to me? Right? And we want to understand it. Oftentimes, we want to understand what's the purpose of it. And it's valid, right? You can search, like, why does this happen to me? I always say to people, when you go through something extremely tough, you're not always going to understand it. You're just not. Some things are so tough, you can't understand it in the moment. Just survive it, right? Survive the moment, day by day, moment by moment, second by second. Celebrate small wins. It was days to where I had to come in and I had to celebrate the fact that, oh, man, I think I got a little feeling in my arm. Right. I don't have all my feeling. It's not the same, but I could feel something today that I couldn't feel yesterday. And to the average person, they'll be like, oh, that's a little touch because they could feel their whole arm. I remember the day I got in the shower and for a long time I couldn't feel anything on my back. Right. My upper torso was just numb from my injury and the surgeries. And I'll never forget the day I got in the shower and the water hit my back. And I was like, oh, man, like I could feel my back. Right. It was a small win, but I was just trying to survive the days. Right. Moment by moment, day by day. And then you get to a place to where you capture peace. And then when you capture peace and you feel as if, okay, man, I think I got some grips on this thing. Then you go out and you share it with somebody that may be going through something because it's an amazing thing. We all go through experiences and challenges and adversity and opposition. And the one thing that I feel like we all have in common as people is adversity, opposition and challenges. We're all going to go through them. Right. And so if we feel as if we're just going through something and it's just for us, we've missed the boat because I guarantee you as somebody that's dealing with a similar experience, not that it has to be specific. But when they're going through this, if you've conquered something in your life, it would be a waste not to share it to help them conquer a certain spirit experience in their life. And so adversity and opposition is just a tool. But survive the moment. Don't always try to understand it. Survive it. And once you survive it and get to a place of peace, Get to a place to where you can share it to try to help another individual and add value to environments you go into and people, places, and things that you encounter. Inky, that is powerful stuff. I'm going to have to listen to that many, (laughs) many times. You know what I love is you're you're saying, you know, find the small wins, celebrate those wins. But I love the way you you say this, not find peace, not look for peace, Mm -hmm. not search for peace. You said Capture it. Absolutely. Peace. Capture, capture like, it, man. Capture I mean, th- th- there's just a yeah. visual with capture. <laughs> yeah, right? Capture it, And man. you wouldn't think of peace and Absolutely. capture, like, I'm going to capture this peace. <laughs> yeah. you know? Absolutely. Uh, usually peace, you just think about yeah. you know, relaxing Absolutely. on the beach. Absolutely. But you're going out and capturing it. So I think yeah, there's man. something There's something to that. And then sharing. And um, sharing, I think, what, what you're saying is give back. Absolutely. And, and you do give back. I know you and your Absolutely. wife, I think, have a foundation. You Absolutely. do a lot for the homeless. You're looking to to really uh, give back. How important is it giving back, and what does that do to you? It's extremely important uh, because I think that that puts the uh, fingerprints on your legacy and who you are as a person. And I feel like somewhere along the way in all of our lives, somebody has helped us, right? And that doesn't always have to be just a physical gesture of somebody doing something for us. But I think somewhere along the way, whether it was belief, whether it was a time where a person questioned themselves and their ability and somebody came along and say, hey, man, you got it, right? Believe in yourself. I'm telling you, you got it, right? And so somewhere in our lives, somebody has came along and said something nice that propelled us or somebody did something for us. And so in my personal life, a lot of people helped me at a young age. And I was always aware that they didn't have to do it. Like, I'll never forget, man, the time my coach he went out and he bought me and my cousins like steak. Like, I, and I didn't even eat steak at the time. He bought us a steak at a restaurant and we ate it. And I'll never forget, we walked in the house and yeah, I think we coming up, two bedroom, 14 people. And we went in the house stoked, like, man, coach got us a steak, right? And everybody said, you ate a steak, right? And, and you would think like in the world, like it's people out there like steak. Yeah, but it was more about the experience and somebody taking time to do it. And so even with us doing work with the Atlanta mission, homeless in Atlanta, like it's powerful when you help a person and how it makes you feel and what it does for your perspective. Like I'll never forget, we helped people at the Atlanta mission. There was a shelter in particular called my sister's house. 
and we helped and we served and we cleaned up and ladies came in and did the little girl's hair. Gentlemen came in, cut some of the little guy's hair. And I'll never forget, we're cleaning up and we're getting ready to leave. And a lady and her daughter came and she stopped us and we were all at the door. And she said, hey, um, are you guys going to come back? Because we really enjoyed today. Are you guys going to come back? And really what she was saying to us was, man, please come back. We greatly appreciate you guys acknowledging us as humans. And for us, that was powerful, man. But I think service is extremely powerful. Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Love that. Love that, Dr. King reference. What about, um, you know, speaking to, to that young person who says, well, you know, Inky, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you may not have had privilege, but you had talent. You, yeah, you, yeah. you had you you had spark. You had intelligence. You had yes, things sir. that I can't have, you know, yes, and my sir. life is not like yours because, and they have the list. Absolutely. What do you say to that? I'm sure mm-hmm. you've had this. Oh, right? absolutely. What do you say to that absolutely. young person? Man, and, and like you said, I've, I've encountered it a lot throughout the years just with the work that I do. And I always say to them, like, you're right. Like, we all are uniquely gifted, right, in our different areas and aspects of life. You're right. But the thing that we can never do is say, because you got this and I didn't do this, I can't do this, right? Life is an equal opportunity, right? Every single day, we all get the same amount of hours, regardless of where we come from, regardless of situation and circumstances. And we have to make decisions and choices that can't feel as if I always joke with people, I, I tell them, like, my mom gave me a list when I was younger. I joke with them all the time. And it says, it's, a, it's a sheet of paper, and it says, you're entitled to this. And the paper is blank, right? <laughs> like, you're not entitled to anything. If you want something, you get up, you work, and you make it happen. And you bust your butt. And you bump into good people. You have a little bit of luck along the way. And when you work hard, good things happen. But the spirit that we can never go and grow throughout life with is, man, you got this. I don't have this. And so you can have this. I, I, I could have said that when I was coming up through school. Like, man, I'm at the lowest performing public school in the state of Georgia. I can't go to college. You guys are going to college from here. No. I said, man, I want to go to college from here. I think I can do it. And if I go to college from here, I think it's going to infuse a level of belief in those that's coming behind me. That's why I fought so hard to go to college from that school. Because with the circumstances and the things that we face, even whether it's in business with challenges, whether it's in the personal family life with challenges, anytime you conquer and you overcome something, it sends a message to other people that it's possible. And so I always say to them, man, it's possible. Play the card, play the hand that you dealt like it's the one you always wanted. Play the card that you have as if it's the one you've always wanted, regardless Absolutely. of what it is. Regardless of what it is. Uh, uh, you, yeah, your perspective on, on everything is um, is so unique. Uh, your attitude, gratitude, all these things, I, I also think faith probably plays a big role in that for you. So faith, um, and, and and you've you've relied on faith throughout your whole life, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, so, you know, you think about, um, you think about people listening they're going through uh, hard times. Some of them are really on the top of the world right now. And they're thinking, well, you know, this is, I'm always up here, right? And they, they, it's almost like that entitlement. And they realize, no, I love that blank sheet of paper analogy. Every day is a blank sheet of paper. Absolutely, right? man. I and uh, you, you're determined to write uh, new things. And what you're talking about, looking at other people, uh, one of the things I always tell people is uh, turn your envy into curiosity mm, and then you'll I change everything that. yeah like, instead good. of being envious that's right good. i'm just gonna ask you that's good so i was always interviewing people to ask them well what works that's good man. i'm looking for what makes people um tick and successful that's um, good. or what's making them fail so absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I clearly with you you have this uh, spirit you also cultivate energy, I think. So how do you? How does one use? I'll just end with asking that because you, yeah. you bring this energy, you radiate energy on stage. Yeah. You, you know, you, I don't know. You're, you're drinking water, not yeah. caffeine, yeah. constantly. Yeah. Like, what is it that gives you that energy? Yeah. Do you know? Can you? You can't yeah. bottle that, I guess. Yeah. No, no. It's um, it's just the background of athletics, and even when I play, trying to operate and figure out what's going to help me operate at the optimal level. And so you had that system. And you had that process as an athlete to where when you came into an environment, it was so detailed. You know, when you played, okay, what weight do you need to be at? Okay, this is going to help you operate if you have a diet like this. And so 
you knew it was certain decisions and choices that you could make that can yield the result, or if you didn't, it would yield a different result. And so now, even the perspective that I have about life and the work that I feel I've been commissioned to do, I take my work very serious. Like, I feel like every environment I go into, I'm there by divine appointment. Like, I'm supposed to be there, right? Whether it's for one person, 10 people, I'm supposed to be in that environment, all of the places that I go. I just feel like it's orchestrated by force a lot greater than me. And so if I want to be my best, I have to take care of my temple. I have to do things that's going to help me generate energy. I have to make sure I'm eating right. I have to make sure I'm working out. If I want to be the best possible father, best possible husband, that doesn't mean perfect, but just put myself in positions to give myself a shot and a chance at being elite or successful in the things that I want to do. And so with me, with speaking and being on stage, I just want to be effective. And so I always look at it and say, hey, man, what's the things that's going to help you be the most effective? All right, study, research, energy. Make sure you're getting your proper rest. Make sure you're eating correct. Because all of these things is going to help me with cadence on stage. It's going to help me with breathing control. It's going to help me with being able to speak and remember certain things. And so I told a guy yesterday, I was like, I don't speak as much as I used to, right? And that's by choice because I could be on stage every day if I wanted to. But if you do things like that, it's almost like you're doing a disservice to your work because now you can't properly prepare. Now you can't properly research the groups that you're going to serve. Now you can't get the proper rest. Now you can't be there for your family. And so I wanted to do it a little different so I could try to be the best that I could possibly be. Well, you are the best you could possibly be. (laughs) And for those of you who haven't heard Inky Johnson speak in a motivational kind of form, I highly recommend it. And uh, you will be inspired from uh, not only story, but his attitude. So thank you so much for this. You you were great today. Great watching you inspire many, many people. And hopefully people listening and watching now will also uh, be inspired to dig a little bit more and uh, follow. You can follow you on what? Instagram, yeah, Instagram Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, fa- you, yeah, you name man, it. So all the all, socials. And there may be, and the ones that will come in the future. So absolutely. Anyway, absolutely. But thank I you think, so much. No, man, I thank you. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, you go places, you know, as a speaker and you have experiences and, you know, you go and you serve, but some experiences you have, you thoroughly enjoy it and so i thoroughly enjoy the experience and also being able to hang with you you know thank you so much for this opportunity well thank you Enki.